Hey guys, it's Toad again with another video. Today we're going to be doing a product review of the Artificial Armory Mini Key. So what we're looking at here is a top rail mounted blaster that uses talon claw hardware to fire a mega dart from a single barrel. So what you do with this is you put it on top of a blaster. You can prime it. And then it will fire a mega dart. So what is the purpose of this? Well, first off, anytime you have an extra shot on a blaster, that's going to be a feature that can come up in gameplay. So if your blaster jams or if you run out of ammo, you'll be able to have one more shot before someone can rush in on you and get attacked. However, with Mega, some clubs, especially for HVZ, have special rules for Mega darts, which allow them to do things like stun special zombies or break shields. So having a blaster attached to your primary blaster that fires a Mega dart can be pretty effective in nerf combat. So what I've found with this and this one I have done some paint detailing on, so it's not going to look exactly like this if you order one. Is that it is effective at what it claims to do, which is to fire a mega dart. The FPS is not exceptional, but it is functional. It's not going to just flop out the end of the barrel. It will go uh, 15 to 20 feet accurately and hit somebody at that distance. For HVZ, that's all you need. For trying to tag someone using a shield at a Nerf War, you may want a little bit more. I used my chronograph and I got some data for Mega Darts. For standard Mega Darts, I had a low shot of 43 feet per second and a high of 53 feet per second, with most of the shots being 49 to 52. So you're going to get about 50 feet per second with a traditional Nerf brand Mega Dart. I used AccuStrike Mega Darts. The FPS was a little bit lower. I didn't have any lows that were as low as the standard Mega Darts. However, most of the shots were in the mid 40s. You're looking at 44 to 47 feet per second for AccuStrike Mega Darts. I also tried AccuFake Mega Darts from NF Strike. Those have foam, which is a little bit thinner, and so it doesn't seal in the barrel the way that a Nerf brand dart does. Because of that, I got uh, 32 to 41 feet per second. So you're really giving up about 20 feet per second to use the AccuFake Megas, which are the best cheap Mega Darts, but they're not the best for this particular blaster. So I would recommend sticking with Nerf brand darts uh, because the FPS you're using, you're not really going to be accurate past about 25 feet anyway. So the extra bonus from using an AccuStrike type head is lost with this blaster. Those are more for something like a Mega Caliber Caliburn or a highly modded Mega Flywheel blaster. However, something that I did want to try with this blaster and which did work is that I have this worker barrel insert for a Nerf Mega Big Shock. Uh, if you want to repeat this mod, you'll need to get the one for the Big Shock because the other ones, such as the Cyclone Shock and Hot Shock ones, have a slightly different diameter and they may not work as well. What you can do with this, it's designed to be put into the barrel of a Big Shock to allow it to fire elite ammo. And I found that it works perfectly in the mini key. So what that will allow you to do is fire a standard 50 caliber dart. And the FPS that I was getting for those was about normal for elite darts, a low of 63 and a high of 71, with the average being, or the, the normal shot being about 68 feet per second to 70 feet per second. Also, with this barrel insert, you can shotgun short darts, such as these Worker Gen 3s. The FPS velocities that I got from those are very low. You're looking at 35 to 38 feet per second on the two projectiles. 
So this is a very short range option. You're looking at probably somebody who is within melee range. Um, so for humans versus zombies, this is a great option to have. It allows you to turn your rail mounted blaster into a shotgun. Um, will this be great for blaster versus blaster combat? Probably not. I'd stick with the megas for that or just a full length elite. But if you really need a shotgun, this will allow you to turn a mini key or presumably a, a mistress key into a two-shot shotgun. So what are the pros of this blaster? What are the cons of this blaster? First off, the pros, it does exactly what it's advertised to do. It front loads a mega dart, it fires the mega dart, it gets pretty reasonable performance with a mega dart. Uh, another pro is that it has a Picatinny rail on the top. You can use it as a scope riser. You can attach all kinds of optics to the top of this. So you're not giving up the ability to have something like a scope or a red dot optic on your Nerf blaster if that's something that you're interested in. You also can attach other accessories to it. So, for example, you could have a mistress key with a mini key on top of it, have one of them with the barrel insert for the big shock, fire a shotgun with that, and then a mega with the other one. Would it look silly? Yes. Would it be functional? If that's something that you need, yeah, it'll do that. Uh, what are some cons to the blaster? Um, it has a very heavy prime weight. I wouldn't get this for a little kid. You're looking at basically a talon claw plunger tube with a talon claw spring in it. So this is pretty stiff on the prime. It's much more than something like a night finder. It's more akin to uh, a 10 or 12 kilogram chronos with a t-pole on it. So if you're used to something like that, this will be no problem. Uh, I did sometimes have to hold the attachment itself instead of the grip on the blaster to get it to prime because it does put a lot of torque on the blaster. So if you're holding a blaster by the grip and trying to prime all the way on the top rail, your blaster is going to want to do this and that's going to make it very difficult to prime. What I found was if you hold the mini key like this, you can prime it pretty reasonably every time. The big con that I had with this product is I don't know if I just got a slightly off print or if all of them are like this, but the trigger is a push button on the side here. When the blaster is primed, it's going to pop out about half an inch, a few millimeters, and then you push it in to fire. And it takes quite a bit of force. I was not able to reliably do it with a thumb or a finger while it was mounted on a blaster. I had to push with the palm of my hand in this area. So what I would do was put the, my hand over the blaster and then squeeze with this part touching the trigger. Depending on what kind of optic you attach to the top of it, or if you attach another blaster attachment to the top of it, you may not be able to do that. And so again, I wouldn't recommend this for a younger nerfer, someone with really small hands, because it can be difficult to fire. So I pre-ordered this blaster. It was $32 plus shipping. They are selling them now, and I'll link to their shop in the description. The price for now, because it's no longer a pre-order, is $40 per blaster. You can get a mini key, which is what I featured in this video. You can get a mistress key, which has a longer plunger tube, longer spring, therefore more power. You can also get what they're calling a meeker key, which uses meeker pistol barrel attachments. So if you want something where you can swap ammo from mega to rival to a shotgun without using something like the big shot barrel adapter, adapter I featured, you can buy the meeker key. It's a few dollars more and that will allow you to hot swap barrels while you're playing. You can also use them as swappable shells if you, instead of carrying loose ammo to reload with. So what I met recommend this product? Yes, with a caveat. If I were to buy this again, I would buy either the Meeker key or the full-sized Mistress key. You're not really spending any more money, and even the small one is difficult to prime for someone with small hands or weak arms like a child. So you're not really gaining 
a very light prime weight by getting the smaller one, but I can only assume that you are losing probably 10 feet per second. So I just get the bigger one, uh, deal with the heavier spring, and get that extra performance out of it. I opened mine up. I tried adding some O-rings behind the barrel. It didn't really help the performance. I think they really have optimized this product and it's about as good as you're gonna get out of the form factor. So I do recommend this product. I'm very happy with my purchase and I will be using this at Wars. This has been a review again of the Artificial Armory Mini Key. So thanks for watching the video if you've made it to the end. I'd love if you subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and I'd really appreciate it if you like the video.